Um, so the way that we do this, secant uh, is the same thing as 1 over cosine. So we can convert this to be 1 over cosine theta. These two are equivalent here. We always want to, when we get to this point, if we have secant or if we have uh, cotangent or, or whatever, we want to convert it to hopefully get down to either cosine or sine because then we can use the unit circle. In this case, it's really easy because 1 over cosine is the same as secant. So we're left with 1 over cosine. And then if we do some algebra here, we're going to multiply both sides by cosine theta. And we end up with cosine theta equals 1, right? It just moves over to the left. So cosine theta equals 1. Well, using our unit circle, cosine theta is the first, um, you know, is the x coordinate, the first half of these points here. So where does um, cosine theta equal 1? Well, in this case, it's right here, right? Here's where cosine theta is 1. So, and the value there for that point is 0. So therefore, theta equals 0. And that is how we convert this um, range here from 4, which, is, uh, which corresponds to x, to 0, which is going to correspond to theta. So I'm going to go ahead and write the 0 right there. Then we do the same thing for the 8. So we set 8 equal to our x, which is um, 4 secant theta. We divide both sides by 4, and we get 2 equals secant theta. And then we change this to be 1 over cosine, right? Because we're, we're aiming toward using the unit circle, so we want to get this in terms of cosine. So it's 1 over cosine theta. We multiply both sides by cosine theta. We get 2 cosine theta equals 1. And then we divide both sides by 2 to get cosine on its own. And we get cosine theta equals 1 half. So now we need to figure out where the x-coordinate here on the unit circle um, is equal to 1 half. And in fact, it's this point right here where the coordinate is 1 half, um, the square root of 3 over 2, and the value there on the unit circle is pi over 3. So um, in this case, theta equals pi over 3. And I'm just going to go ahead and write that up here as well, pi over 3. So now we have converted our range <clears throat> from 4 to 8 to 0 to pi over 3. Um, so I can go ahead and erase all of this over here. Um, so I know that this is tedious, but, um, but it's really important that we do this to make sure that we can drop those absolute value brackets. So, now that we've done this, <clears throat> and we have the range 0 to pi over 3, what we do, go ahead and pull out your graphing calculator and graph um, the, the graph of secant of x. Um, if this were you know, tangent of x or cosine of x, you would, you would graph tangent of x or cosine of x. But in our case, since it's secant, graph um, secant of x. And you need to look and see whether the entire graph is positive on the range 0 to pi over 3. So I graphed it ahead of time, and I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, that the graph of secant of x looks approximately like this. We've got a bunch of these coming down um, all the way across, right? And pi over 3 is about right here, which means, right, So, and then obviously here's 0. So you can see that between 0 and pi over 3, this part of the graph is all positive. It's above the x-axis. So since it's positive, we can just drop those absolute value brackets uh, without having to worry about it. So our x isn't going to be four, time, um, 4 times the absolute value of secant of theta. It's just going to be 4 secant theta. If, <clears throat> if any part of the graph were below the x-axis, negative, so for example, if the range were um, this point to um, this point here, and this whole part of the graph is below the x-axis and negative, 
then we would have to add a negative sign in front of our x value. So our x value would be x equals negative 4 secant theta. We would have to have that, that negative sign in front of there. We, would, we could drop the absolute value brackets, but we'd have to have that negative sign in front. So that's why it's important to check, because obviously that negative sign will have um, an effect on the outcome of the, of the problem. Um, so again, just to recap really quickly, the way that you check, you <clears throat> convert the range 4 to 8 in our case um, by, setting, uh, by setting each one of these 4 and 8 equal to uh, your original x, which is just 4 secant theta, um, and then using simplifying, uh, converting the, the secant to cosine, 1 over cosine, um, solving for cosine and then um, using these unit circle values to, uh, to convert that range. So, and we're going to need that range later as well. So it's um, a good thing that we've done it up front and we used it to check to make sure that this is in fact um, just 4 secant theta and not negative 4 secant theta. So great, now we can move on. We've got our x, we've got our range, so the next thing we do is, um, now that we have our x, we need to find dx. So if x equals 4 secant theta, then dx is actually going to be, um, and we need a formula for this. I think I need to leave my unit circle up, so we'll leave it up for now. Um, but the formula for this, the derivative of... Um, secant of x, and that's what we're doing here, we're finding the derivative to get dx. The derivative of secant x is actually um, secant x times tangent of x dx. So that might not be a formula that you are familiar with, um, but this is the formula that we'll need to use. So the derivative will be Four, you can just go ahead and leave that constant. Four secant theta tangent theta. Um, and since we're doing everything in terms of thetas here, this d of x is d theta. So this is the derivative. This dx here is the derivative of x. We needed those two things because once you found x and then solve for dx, we're going to go ahead and plug these values back into our um, original function here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, the integral will be now this time we're going to plug in for dx here. It'll be 4 secant theta tangent theta d theta over we've got an x squared here so our x is 4 secant theta squared and then we have the square root and another x squared so 4 secant theta squared and then just minus 16. Okay so we went ahead and plugged everything in there um, and then of course we need to evaluate this now we this is where we can drop the the 4 and the 8 and we're going to be evaluating on 0 to 3 because remember I said before 0 to um, pi over 3 applies when we're dealing with thetas, and here we've gone ahead and replaced all of the x's with thetas. 4 to 8 applies when we're dealing with x's. So now that we've got this, we can go ahead um, and simplify. I don't think that I'm going to need any of this stuff anymore, and I'm certainly going to need the room. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. Um, okay, so now that we have this, we can simplify.